This is Magic and Mortar. Welcome back, everyone. I am super excited to have you here so I can show you today's video. I hope you're all enjoying the holidays. I know I have been very busy myself, hence the late upload. I do apologize, and I hope you'll be able to forgive me. Lately, I've noticed on my YouTube suggested video feed that there are a bunch of DIY taverns for your tabletop games. So naturally, I thought I'd do the same thing because everyone else is. Um, I'm just kidding. Um, I always try to approach my tutorials with my own techniques, which usually result in failures, but that's great because then I can show you my mistakes. I made tons of mistakes on this video, but I also learned a couple neat tricks. It's my hope that you'd be able to watch the video and take away from it some helpful tips so when you're out making your own beautiful terrain, your players can just enjoy it to the fullest. Thank you so much for being here and for watching the videos. Let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so I had a lot of footage to get through for this video. I will be condensing quite a bit to move things along quickly. Right now we are looking at the materials I purchased. This was made out of basswood. I spent about $17 on the basswood here. It was excellent for what I needed. Um, wonderful product when I was making this tavern. To start off, I just drew a bit of a template onto a piece of paper, and then I simply measured out my walls. Uh, when you're building a structure, a good idea, a good rule of thumb is to have the height be about 2 inches, uh, so the equivalent of about 10 feet tall for your stories. So I'm making the first story of my tavern here. To attach the walls together, we'll simply use a bead of hot glue to tack them in place, and then immediately after that, I'm going to be applying some Gorilla Glue. I'm using a two-hour Gorilla Glue. I'm going to go ahead and just lay a bead down into the seam and then brush it in. Um, that's going to help the piece be stronger in the end. It'll hold stronger than the hot glue by itself. All right, now that all the walls for the first story are glued together, we're gonna begin working on the second story. Um, the L shape that I have there kind of laying on top of the first story, that's the floor to the second story. So that's gonna be the base that we'll start on making the second story there. Um, the reason there's a gap that I'm marking with my Sharpie there, over the entrance, I'm gonna have a bit of a roof space. And so that's why the second story isn't going all the way to the edge. An important note here when you are building the second story, when you have that floor and you're getting ready to build up, you want to see along the edge there, you don't want to bring the floor all the way flush to the side of the building. You want to leave a little bit of space. This is because the piece will be modular. The second floor is going to need to be able to lift up and out of the first story there. And so when you're making this, the reason there's a little bit of uh, a gap there between the edge and the floor, like I'm showing you along the side, is so that it's not really super tight. It needs to have a little bit of wiggle room. And you'll see what I'm going to do after it's all put together is I'm going to have these nice thick pieces of the basswood. And I'm going to run those along the outside of the building. That way it's going to make a really nice um, kind of a cubby for the second story to sit into. Continuing on with the second story here, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the construction as it's very similar to the first floor, uh, but I do want to point out what I'm doing to the floorboards here is I'm just going to score them and make this one solid piece of wood look like many individual planks. So I've got a serrated kitchen knife here. All I'm doing is very gently dragging it across the grain of the wood, and it's going to actually pretty easily cut into and score. An important note when you're doing this, very little pressure. You don't want to cut all the way through, then you'll ruin your floor and you're going to have to spend time gluing it back together. All right, now the second floor is finished. You can see the floorboards cut into the wood there. It looks really good. Go ahead and just line that up with the first story. Make sure everything is going to fall into place before we move on. Now we're going to move on to the roof of our piece here. For the first floor, the roof was very simple, a very small piece. I just glued together two equal lengths of wood, held it in place until it dried right there like you see on the screen. For the second floor, we're going to be making the frame up out of wood as well. Uh, it's just going to take a little bit more effort, and you'll see we're going to start with one nice long solid beam for the center of the roof. All right, so we want the roof to be one solid piece. That way it can lift easily up and off of the terrain, revealing the second story. To begin, all I did was cut out two triangles. This was very easy for me to figure out because I already had the manufactured piece of wood and all I did was cut from the side of the wood. So I already had that 90 degree angle for the pitch of my roof. So if that makes sense, what you're looking at here, I've got the piece of wood, I'm holding it up against the side of the building with that manufactured edge as the peak on the top of the screen. And and I'm just going to draw a line where I need to make my cut. So that way my roof angle, the pitch, is going to be the same on both sides of the building. 
be sure that the pieces you just cut are going to fit properly on your roof. And then we're going to begin with some hot glue and we're going to start tacking the triangles to the beam that we cut for the length of our roof. This also shows the other reason that 90 degree factory cut angle was an excellent choice. I didn't even plan this, but obviously now when we're putting that beam across the roof, it's also just a 90 degree angle and it's going to line up perfectly with the rest of the pitch. In order to create a roof that will be easily removed and that will easily be set back in place, when you cut the length of beam for the length of your roof piece, you want to cut it a little bit longer than the actual length of the building. So you can see here, when I go to put the roof on when it's a finished piece, it'll hang over the edge. It will very easily set on top of the second story like you see on screen. And then I can be able to set it down, it'll sit there firmly, and then I'll be able to pull it off just as easily. Moving forward, we will be using Dollar Tree foam board for the construction of the roof tiles. And you'll notice that I've added a center piece, a tri another triangle that I cut there for the roof to add some more support. And I've also added two additional beams running along the lengths of the edges. To get the cuts for the foam here, very simple. Just uh, turn the roof over, lay the flat side down, and then go ahead, just mark it with a marker or something and then cut it out. I had to work around the middle support of my roof that I added, which was no big deal. I just had to cut the styrofoam in half, right about in the middle. And to attach here, all we are doing is adding hot glue to the frame of the roof and then grabbing the styrofoam and pressing it in until it dries. The technique that I like to use when I create my roof tiles is my personal favorite. Very easy to do, extremely affordable with the Dollar Tree foam board, and if you do it right, it just looks absolutely beautiful. And the added bonus is you don't even need to be a professional in this craft. It's, it's just so easy to follow along and do this with me. So what you want to do with the foam board, make sure you peel that paper backing off, and then you're going to go ahead and start cutting a bunch of these little trapezoid shapes where it has the four sides, and you want the bottom to be, you want the slope on the tiles to go down and out. So as long as you have all these trapezoids with the four sides, Sides, the bottom being larger and then what you want to do is you want to start gluing in rows at a time you want to start on the bottom edge of the roof glue down one row of tiles and then start the next row on top of that kind of overlapping working your way all the way up towards the peak of the roof after you finish with that step your roof should look a little bit like this now we're going to begin starting a little bit of detail work get a nice sharp blade and just start cutting these deep v grooves into your tiles right now we're just adding a little bit of weathering and some damage to the roof making it look like a nice old building you can go ahead and do the deep v's that you see me doing right here as well as right here just kind of taking a few chips and stuff off the corners of the tiles as well and before moving on, I want to add a little bit of texture to the tiles because right now it's just that really flat foam. And then so what I'm doing is I'm using the tip of a pen. I'm not actually using the ballpoint. I'm just using the end of the plastic case and I'm dragging not very uh, tough. I'm not using a lot of pressure, but I am using a, a little bit, if that makes sense. And I'm just dragging kind of down diagonally across every which direction, honestly, just adding a little bit of texture to the tiles. All right, next we're gonna do an important step here, adding a bit of a sealer to the uh, foam tiles as well as a little bit of structural integrity here with the glue and also a bit of a base coat for our painting. This was shamelessly borrowed from Black Magic Craft. This is his Mod Podge and acrylic paint mix, 50-50 Mod Podge and black acrylic. We're gonna apply this to the foam and that wood support beam in the middle. The only area of the roof I'm not doing this to is the inside that you can't see. All right, moving on to painting the roof here. I'm going to just be mixing a bit of a blend of some uh, browns and red here. I want a nice dark undercoat. Um, I'm utilizing that Mod Podge that we had there as my base coat. And then I'm going to be applying layers on top of that, uh, progressively just getting lighter and lighter with our dry brushes. So the first layer you'll see here I'm applying is just a very dark red, uh, just that blend of colors. And I'm not going out of my way to push into the recesses, right? Those dark V grooves that we cut with our X-Acto knife, we want those to stay really dark. So the black Mod Podge that's in those cracks is a perfect shadow for us. Don't don't fuss with it just leave it the way it is after that layer is dry we can go ahead and start adding our next layer i've chosen to go with a very vibrant red color here and i'd say you could do the same i wouldn't be afraid to use vibrant colors i think that after all that's what really makes the terrain pieces really stand out after that we'll move on to a dry brush again very light red almost a pink color my final dry brush i chose almost white and i'm very aggressive with it because my brush is very dry so i can choose to be aggressive 
So that finishes up our roof for now. We'll be turning our attention back to the rest of the structure. I'm gonna be applying a layer of all-purpose joint compound. I'm doing this on my piece to kind of help hide any of the cracks where there were two pieces of wood joined together. Um, also, it is gonna apply a wonderful texture so that when we begin painting the exterior, it's gonna help us with a lot of um, different shadows and highlights. I chose to lightly sand my piece to kind of cut back on some of the bumps. You can see right here how bumpy it would have been, but I decided to sand it and it still has nice grooves in there. Totally up to you, it doesn't quite matter. Next, what we want to do is attach the beams that are going to separate the first floor from the second floor. All you have to do for this is just cut them to the appropriate length and then I'll be attaching them with hot glue first. Later, I'll be going back to Gorilla Glue them. We're also going to be attaching some interior supports. Using that same stick of basswood and hot glue, we're going to tack it in place, and then we're going to apply Gorilla Glue to the seam. The Gorilla Glue is what's really helping bond here. The hot glue is not quite strong enough. You can see with the exterior basswood in place how integral that is to the modular effect of our piece. The second story very easily lifts out and is put back in place. As well as the roof, I chose to add a bit of a chimney you can see above the entrance to the building there. I made the chimney using the same technique with the basswood and the plaster, and you can see how well that serves to hold the roof in place. That way the roof is modular as well. To finish up the exterior, I chose to use the thin pieces of basswood to kind of outline the building, and I'm going to attach these thin sticks with hot glue and Gorilla Glue as well, just like the thicker sticks. You can see I'm just kind of going along the edges. Uh, this is totally up to you. You can add whatever amount of detail you would like using the wood sticks. I just think it makes for a really, a really good looking building. Now that we have all of our detail work in place, we're gonna move on to a very easy, simple step if you are making buildings, if you're new to it, if you just want a very simple trick to uh, um, creating a great looking building with very minimal effort, uh, your solution is wood stain. We're gonna be applying wood stain, obviously to the interior, to the wood, but also to the entire exterior of the building. You're gonna see how quick and easy this creates a really beautiful looking building, and it doesn't require a lick of talent or any delicate approach. You just slop it on a brush, brush it all over the piece, and presto, you have a beautiful building. There are a few things I wanna to bring to your attention. If you use the Gorilla Glue like I did around the piece here, you'll notice that the wood stain did not take properly to that area, so you'll end up with kind of a blotchy mess. I also want to draw your attention to the bottom of the piece. You can see that a lot of the stain ended up pooling in areas. That's because you have to be careful if you're using wood stain to mop up any excess. Also, if you made any marks for measurements on your wood, you can see that the stain is not going to cover that up. So just be careful of these few things. Otherwise, it's a very simple, very easy way to make a beautiful building. The wood stain is an excellent wash. You can see how, how amazing it did with all the nooks and crannies. A lot of depth is added to your piece. And that will mark the end of the video. I appreciate you all for being here, for watching. I can't thank you enough. Your viewership is everything. That's why I do this, so that we can grow, that the DIY community can just thrive off of each other sharing ideas and such. So thank you again for participating. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you'll be able to take away maybe the, the drywall compound, right? The all-purpose joint compound, the wood stain wash, or even the foam core roof techniques. Um, just a wonderful way to add a crazy amount of detail to your projects with very minimal effort. Uh, you will notice that I have a time lapse running right now, and that is because... Like I showed you in the video, we had a couple mistakes with the Gorilla Glue and the wood stain kind of got messed up. The um, the markings with the Sharpie on the wall got a little bit messed up. And so I chose to continue painting in a way that I wanted to, right? I just wanted to um, kind of finish it strong and make a really beautiful piece. So feel free to stick around and watch that time lapse. You guys, thank you again for being here. I hope that you have just a wonderful holiday season, a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and I hope all your wildest dreams will come true, and I hope that 2020 is good to you. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next year.